Intuitively, to me, it feels like the shadow of the planet surfacing. This is synchronicity. 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 Welcome to episode 105 of Synchronicity. This marks the beginning of the third year of Synchronicity. We're going into the third year. 104 of these was actually a full two years, 104 episodes, 104 weeks. That's pretty nuts. Uh, This week, I have a really interesting episode because it kind of got fucked up. So I sat down with Allison Charles, a.k.a. Rockstar Shaman, uh, a few days before this event we did, Wellbeing in the Modern Age, uh, in New York City. She was a panelist, um, and we had a nice, lovely chat for about an hour. So after our chat, I look down at the recorder, and it's not recording. So we begin to freak out a little bit. We actually handled it amazingly, and you'll hear us talk about that at the end of this episode. Um, I'm a spaz. I usually freak out when anything like this happens, especially if I feel like I've wasted someone's time. It really it does not sit well with me, uh, but we handled it really well. We moved through it, um, and we recorded at the end of it, and then I checked back, and oh, lo and behold, we did have the episode. All is well in the world. I got back home, uh, forgot all about it, sat down to edit this episode, and what do you know? 16 minutes in, boom, cut off. So we got a little bit of the episode, not that much. What you're going to hear in this is about 16, 17 minutes of me and Allison getting to know each other. She's giving me her bio. Then you're going to hear me come in again, explain that it got cut off. Um, And then you're going to hear about five, six minutes towards the end uh, about uh, some divine feminine energy stuff. um, And then Allison's practical tip and end of the podcast. So it's a really short, kind of awkwardly condensed episode. That said, um, I'm definitely doing another one with her. I've already reached out. She was such a sweetie when I said, hey, this is what happened. Um, Just a wonderful human being. She's got an incredibly interesting story, um, too, which I really think uh, you get to hear a little bit of in this episode, but we're definitely going to delve into a little bit more deeply. Um, And also, I wanted to speak about a few other things related to this episode. One of the things that we covered in this, but you're not going to get to hear, is what is a shaman? What is the functionality of a shaman? What happens? What is done? Uh, How do you become one? Do you have to take ayahuasca? Do you have to do all this stuff? And the answer that Allison gives, I think, is beautiful, which is no. You don't have to be involved in a certain tradition to be a shaman. A shaman who's someone who parses the unseen worlds that exist around us and translates what's going on back to the rest of us. So in that way, many of us are shaman. Uh, Shaman. (laughs) Shaman. Shaman. Shawomen. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about now. Uh, So this was a really interesting concept for me because I know some people are very sensitive to the idea of what is a shaman. You have to be from Peru. You have to be uh, in in Icaro. You have to be able to sing them. I don't really subscribe to that theory myself. I think that, again, anyone who can take something from somewhere in the unseen worlds and bring them back and communicate them to the rest of us, that's a shaman. So I want to be clear that Allison is not using plant medicines with her stuff. She is not using... um, She's not steeped in some indigenous tradition. She had some experiences that kind of woke her up to some deeper levels of herself in the world. And she's using that to kind of speak authentically uh, with her own voice. And that's these are the type of people I love the most in the world. Normal people who have had paranormal or abnormal or crazy experiences, but who are able to integrate those two aspects of themselves. And we know we have the persona that we're constantly putting up and this is who we are into the world, but we also know that's not really who we are. There's other aspects of ourselves. There's deeper aspects of ourselves and trying to hold those two, the persona and our deeper self, um, it's, uh, it's what life is about, right? It's a challenging thing too. So Allison, really just a wonderful person. With that said, I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about 
we've had some crazy fucking things going on, right? We've had natural disasters, earthquakes, hurricanes. We just had this Las Vegas thing, um, you know, the shooting that took place. So I'm going to take a minute to talk about that. So it's been a while since I've chimed in on any global or political or just stuff going on in the world events. Um, I figured since this is a shorter episode, I could uh, do a little bit of that here. This is all offered and said, not that I have answers for this stuff, um, but an approach that has worked relatively successfully for me related to global catastrophes, suffering around the world, um, things that are just hard for us to wrap our heads around, right? Like global disasters, national uh, natural disasters. Um, this event that took place in Las Vegas where a guy you know, shot and killed over 50 people and injured 500 plus just like there's we don't have really skills to interpret these events typically um so what all i all i wanted to speak about related to this stuff is um remember that if you find yourself getting sucked into a pit of despair as you're consuming all of this information about things that happen around the world um just be aware that that's a choice that you're making um, yes, this stuff is going on, and I'm not suggesting that we bury our heads in the sand and don't pay attention. I actively read the news almost every day, um, but I do that because I don't walk around afterwards angry, upset, freaked out. Um, I've spoken about this before. I don't think it's some amazing skill that I have. I think it's just I have my own issues and my own personal life and relationship lives that I, those are my priority. I can't take on how shitty of a person Donald Trump is in my psyche. I just can't take that on. I can look at things he does, like throwing paper towels to people with a smile on his face in Puerto Rico and be like, holy shit, the fuck is the matter with this guy? But I can't take him into my sphere of consciousness and think about it all of the time, if that makes sense. Um, so that's something that I think is useful. I, again, this isn't to suggest that I'm not taking like the the spiritual bypass uh, uh, idea, which is, oh, well, I'm spiritual. Reality is an illusion. I don't have to worry about it. That's not what I'm suggesting. What I'm suggesting is, is find the balance between knowing what's going on and your own mental health right? And psychological health and spiritual health. These are really important things to do because I get messages from people saying like, how do I deal with the immense suffering around the world? I've opened my heart. You know, something has happened. Something has changed. The veil has been lifted. And now I feel everything so fucking hard. And I've been there. That, that happened to me back in the early 2000s, mid 2000s. So I know exactly what that feels like. And it can be overwhelming. I often will tell people who are coming in contact uh, with, you know, latent psychic abilities or empathic abilities where they walk into a party and they feel the energy of everyone around them. And sometimes they can even hear thoughts or catch on thoughts that other people are thinking, which I know can sound a little crazy, but this shit happens. I'll tell them, to, I use the metaphor of a psychic shield. Have a way to put up a psychic shield. Have a way to have something that, that not blocks, but at least filters through what you can handle psychically. If that makes sense. And I know this is getting a little woo, but this is practical shit in the woo realm. So that's what <laughs> it's my new podcast. Practical shit in the woo realm. Um, but really, just be aware and mindful of your own emotional, psychological, and spiritual states as you go out into the world. That includes your immediate relationships um, and the news, quote unquote, information that we see around us. If you can, if you're super advanced, Try to have some compassion and love for the people who really seem like they have a hard time with it. That includes our president. That includes people like Stephen Paddock, this guy who shot all the people in Las Vegas. Um, try to have compassion for people who are part of the NRA if you don't agree with people having automatic and semiotic guns in this country. Try to understand where they're coming from. It's easy to label people as idiots, racists, um, morons. Uh, uncaring, hateful filled people. But the truth is, is when you really dig down and get to know people, that's not who they are. Yeah, you have sociopaths here and there. But for the most part, people just want to be loved. And they want to love. That's it. It's really that fucking simple. So if you can drop yourself back into that mind state, as you're approaching all of these things in the world, I think that'll do you well. I don't like to preach. I don't like to give advice. This has helped me. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Got a little off track there. Thought it was worth mentioning because I see just 
everywhere online, people freaking out and taking this stuff really hard. Even Alexis came to me yesterday and she goes, does it seem like the world is just getting crazier and worse and worse? Yeah, kind of, maybe. And I think this is some somewhat of a natural occurrence as we move towards uh, <laughs> some different modalities of reality. Um, but also, I think we just have access to information we didn't have before. And I think we have more complex systems than we had before, which creates more information and opportunities for situations and experiences. So uh, just just remember, just remember, if you're able to, don't take all of this stuff so seriously. Don't let it bog you down, not because you shouldn't be bogged down. There's value in bogged down mind states, but because you are in control of your mind state, whether you believe that or not. It's taking me a tremendous amount of time to realize that even when I'm rage filled and angry and screaming, I still have some aspect of control over what I'm doing. So you do too. That's what I'm saying. All right. I rambled on enough. Uh, Allison Charles, please go check her out at allisoncharles.com. She is a shaman. She is a speaker. She is a healer. And more importantly, she's just a real person doing real shit. I sat down with her. I looked her in the eyes. That's the beauty of doing these podcasts. You can sense what people are really about when you're right there with them. And she's just a wonderful, beautiful person. So please enjoy this episode. Apologies that it's a little a little weird because it got clipped at 16 minutes. But I think you're going to love it. I have some amazing episodes coming up. Keep the support coming with reviews, ratings, donations, Patreon, new music coming soon. I know I've been saying I have an EP coming out uh, this fall. Uh, I've been saying October. I'm sitting here October 4th. I'm still shooting for October, but it might be early November. What are you going to do? Got to do shit. Got to get these songs out. Got to get them out right. So it will be happening. Rest assured. If you're interested in getting that album, that EP, uh, for $9, go sign up on Patreon. $9 a month will get you free access to the album, patreon.com slash synchronicity. I've now officially rambled on too much. <laughs> Without further ado, here is Allison Charles. Doing Living Marketplace. Hello, everyone. How this, are you? This place really is amazing, too. It's really got a nice vibe to it. Thank you. Yeah, it's really cool. That's awesome. All right. Are good. you okay with the uh, music in the background? Do you want us to turn it down a little bit? Let's see. Let's listen for a second in our headphones and see if we hear anything. Well, well of course. <laughs> like on yeah, cue. On cue, of course. <laughs> I think we should be. I mean, they're directional. I don't think it's going to be. And it's a nice ambiance, too. Okay. It's not like, I think we'll be fine. Okay. If it gets like ragingly loud. It shouldn't. But I don't think it will, okay. based on the music choices so far. So I think we're good. Okay. Um, all right, cool. Thank you so much for doing this, by the way. Are you kidding? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm really excited to do this and find out uh, a lot more about you. We spoke a few days ago on the phone. Last week, was it? I, I have no idea. Time, honestly, right now or lately, no, no concept of it. Let's start with time then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. I was just having a conversation with one of my friends um, where we were talking about like relating to other members of the family. And I pointed out I was just at a bat mitzvah with my family. And some of that family, they're Trump supporters. Oh. They're not my, they're my wife's family. No, I don't think anyone in my family, but they're really nice people. They're like incredibly nice. Right. And they're from Houston. And Harvey had just happened. And a question was asked like, how, why would God allow something like, uh, Harvey to happen in this place and they know people who are like their homes are gone no insurance mm -hmm. nothing mm -hmm. and I shifted the conversation to suffering and the function of suffering and then at some point it got into time and I was mm -hmm. like yeah time's an illusion it's not a real thing and this, it got real oh. weird then it was like luckily the appetizers were done we went into the party so we got a nice there shift, was an easy transition away from the no the time is not real conversation yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. time does not really exist but let's and I just had another one with the, the cab driver so let's start there like what Leslie, let's not. Let's not jump right into the deep end, Allison. I want to find out a little bit more about you because I know you've had like a really interesting life to date through a lot of different personas and just places in the world. So mm -hmm. could you give like a nutshell kind of like who who are you? <laughs> right. Yeah. Who am I? 
I've definitely evolved a lot. And like you just touched on, it does feel like in this lifetime, even just so far, and I'm only in my middle age, I feel like I've lived for at least four different distinct life versions of myself yeah, already. Yeah. I, you know, started as a national champion athlete. Um, my dad was my coach, so I was born into that lifestyle. How long? How long did you do that? For? I did it from he put me in my first race before I was three. <laughs> There's picture proof. Like I'm running, waving, wearing little blue Nike running shoes. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, and then I ran all the way through college. I ran for the University of Alabama and I was a distance runner. Mm -hmm. So from three through 18, you know, it was intense. It was yeah. a lot of training, a lot of twice a day training, yeah. pounding the pavement. And at the University of Alabama at the time, there weren't uh, really many trails. We actually ran, did a lot of training in the cotton fields, which was interesting, very yeah. And, uh, but a lot of pavement running. Yeah. So by the time I got to be 18, my body, your knees are like shot, done. Right? I've had, yeah. I've had a knee surgery. Yeah. yeah. And I had a femoral stress fracture when I was in college. I remember sure. being on crutches for six months and I would go to class and one of my professors was giving me a hard time. Like, Oh, you're only, you know, or I guess I ran through college. So I was a little bit older by the time I was done. But when I was like 18, he was giving me a hard time for it or being so injured and having a femoral stress fracture. I was like, do you understand that I've been running for 15 years already? Yeah, geez. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I mean, it's that constant too. So that was your life. That right? was the yeah, identity. Yeah, yeah. That was the yeah, life. Yeah. That was the storyline. <laughs> yeah. And I've had, I'm still working through a lot of that. I don't right. want to label it all as traumatizing. I wouldn't change right. a second of it. Right, right. It was all part of the journey. And that was my first meditation of practice running running it's what's funny not not to cut you off but i just started running like two three years ago like okay. really doing it every day and like feeling you know the ups and downs i'm not a cross country runner or anything and it's so meditative so it's much. like you just get into that place like once you get past if you're not a runner that like horrible feeling of like i'm gonna die yeah. i don't want to do this anymore yeah it really you get into this nice place and that second win and sometimes the third win that's so cool i get it it's this a whole nother yeah. realm yeah. that you get yeah. into yeah. and then it's just you yeah. and your connection to earth right right, right. Yeah, no, it's amazing. It's I, really I totally powerful. get the physical. Okay, so that's one, that's your persona up through, through college, college. Through college. And I, I always, on my own, even as a young girl, I was never one, I don't think to this day I've read a fiction book. I could be wrong. Same. I mean, I did when I was younger, but now all nonfiction. Oh, so what I were you mean, reading? What were you metaphysics. Reading? Like what? Like give feng me... shui, healing power of colors, palmistry, how, psychic training. From how old do you remember? Like From as far back as right. I can remember. Right. And so those were like the first whisperings of the truer me. Right, right. You know, um, and I also always knew from a young age there was going to be something TV component in my life. I, I thought maybe because of my athletics, I'd be the next Hannah Storm, you know, the next sure, female sure. sports broadcaster. Yeah. Uh, so I, I had like sniffs and wafts of those things. And after college, I, I was really hitting up against like, who am I? And I thought this running thing, I don't think it's the true me, yeah. but it's all I've ever known. And I also don't want to resist against something out of like, wrong reason right just not wanting to do it just because you don't like lazy or like not want to go for it. yeah totally or just pushing it. against like because yeah. my dad made me do it all totally. my life or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. but i thought okay let me exhaust these options and make sure that i'm correct that this is not my sole calling so i did become i moved to florida was an advanced certified personal trainer and then i got a division one college coaching job oh wow those were lovely but it did confirm it was rewarding but it confirmed it was not, not my truth right, right, right. And that's when my first um, very mild and enjoyable divine intervention happened. Right, right. It was not the divine intervention style of my awakening day. Well, those are typically not as pleasant <laughs> as people would like to imagine. No. <laughs> but the first light one was when I was training in the gym and uh, Universe sent in a client and he was like, you should be my radio show co-host. So they took me out of the gym. They're like, all right, you figured this out enough yeah. of this. Plot me in the radio. So that's how it began in entertainment. And where, where was this? That was in Orlando, Florida. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. So that started version two of Allison. My real last name is Allison Mills. All right. So there's that okay. at play so too. Okay, so you even changed actual name. Okay. Yeah. So the stage name is Allison Charles. Um, there's a funny high school story with that. But um, 
What's the story? What's well, I was in detention. <laughs> I, I I went through a streak, a rebellious streak. Me too. <laughs> Do you Me relate too. to that? Oh, okay. too. I got very familiar with security personnel. Never, never anything bad. Uh-huh. I was just constantly being sent to the library and in trouble. And so it, it was high school. Your rebellious middle streak? high middle school high school. Yeah, I can see that a little bit in your eyes now that I look in there. <laughs> a little. A little mischievous. That's good. Yeah. So I was in detention with my best friend in high school and we were filling out the information for our senior yearbook. Yeah, like, yeah. and she couldn't stand, I don't have a middle name and it always bothered her. And she said, you know, let's give, let's make up a middle name for yeah, you yeah. to put in the yearbook. So I put out, I said, I've always loved the name Charles. So in the senior yearbook, it says Allison Charles Mills. And then when I was deciding all these years later, if I wanted to have a stage name, I was like, I'll just go to the Charles. It's a great name. Yeah. It's a great name. You. It works. I didn't question it. It felt like an actual name. That's the good mark of a good fake name. So Great. Go. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. So that, um, so yeah, version two of me was radio. I did AM talk and then I got hired to be a hip hop morning show host. Cool. So Were you into hip hop? I was really into hip hop. Okay, good. Okay, good. Like Snoop D O Double G yeah, yeah. was my guy. Of course, of course. You know, doggy style was the Talking jam. Talking the same language. Yeah. Okay, okay, great. Yeah, okay. So that, that that was my thing, and that was so much fun. I was young. I could get up at three a.m. Yeah. Wake oh, the people yeah. up. Oh, shit. You yeah. know, do that whole thing, yeah. and uh, then I transitioned to television. So that, and then then we'll hit on when I had my awakening. But radio and TV, and still, that's still. I mean, here we are podcasting. We're doing radio right now. Yeah. I still film. Um, Those are still key components. But now it's more now I'm who I really am. So when I'm on media and now I'm doing interviews, I'm speaking as the shamanic practitioner, the awakened Allison, not the suffering one. (laughs) So let's that's where I want to jump in, of course. So the what what was the moment? Okay. Describe the process of awakening. I've asked the question so many times and I've learned that there's never a moment, there may be a spark or a catalyst, but yeah. it is clearly a process that right. happens. What was your trigger? What was kind of some of the circumstances or experiences around like your awakening? When I when I became woke. <laughs> as the kids say, yeah. <laughs> as those youngins say, those millennials. Um, so I just gave my myself away. And our cameraman's also cheering because he's clearly a millennial. Oh, uh, Yeah. So it was, it birthed from my ex-fiance, you know, I, he was also an athlete at Alabama. Mm-hmm. And so we, st- our journey started when we were both really young. Yeah. How, and, how old? Like- well, my first day when I was literally sitting, um, outside of the training room, lacing up my running shoes oh, really? for my first day of practice oh, wow. was when he walked to go to the baseball locker room. And that's where the story begins. So we were together for a long time, yeah, yeah, yeah. like 16 plus years. Oh, 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 what? oh, that is a long time. Yeah. That's like a really, really long time. So yeah. long. Wow. There was a pocket in the middle where we weren't together when I moved to Florida. We were still uh, in connection, yeah, yeah, but yeah. not in relationship. Yeah. Wow. But still doing the journey. And um, so, yeah, it, but that it worked up to a point we were engaged, you know, progressing, owned a place in Connecticut, all that stuff. And it all boiled down to the suffering all all together in the relationship as a whole and myself and him. It was just continuously rising Mm. and the pain was getting so insurmountable and the confusion and all the angst, um, all of it was getting so high. It was clearly universe trying to get both of our attention for so many different reasons. And I was in so much denial that I was denying the heed, denying the messages. Yeah. And I'm also a very, I'm a dedicated distance, high performance athlete. Right. I never give up. Right, right. I'm right. a one in That's numerology. Like built into you. Right. I'm a Capricorn, <laughs> the goat that never stops climbing. So I was pushing away all of these messages. And I'm obviously leaving a million things out because it's almost two decade long story, but it got to a place of engagement had been called off. I moved to Brooklyn on my own. And a few months later, we were going to give it another go round number well, I mean, whatever. Yeah, it make, you say it like exhaustedly, but it obviously makes sense in the context of everything. That's yeah, a long, thank you. That just doesn't just like, that's not how it works. I think it's just funny looking back that it took me almost two decades to wake up from, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but that's, that's better than like, 
10 decades or never decades, or like hundreds of life cycles that's true so. amen if i had my rattle i would rattle right now i normally carry it with me um so basically yeah it got to a one moment where um my soul was obviously ready to hear the truth mm. and we were going to venture back out and be public once again and um i i have this vision and i believe it to be true uh, they called in universe source was like calling in all the archangels, all my animal totems, like all the guys are like, all right, you guys, we all got to get together. We got to put a stop to this. We're not letting a rock out the door. I could feel them all coming in. And, um, I became clear audience for the first time in my life. Cool. Uh, yeah, uh, the, this voice told me to stop and turn around. I looked and I saw his phone sitting on my bookcase, which he never goes anywhere without. And this force truly pulled me over to the phone. And the voice said to me, brace yourself because what you're about to see is going to rock your world. And here's the other trippy thing. I didn't know his code. I was not one of those people. Yeah. yeah. It Good was like you. automatic spirit writing. Yeah, yeah, Punched in four yeah. numbers. Ping. Yeah, yeah. Saw what I needed to see. Yeah. Horrific. Of course. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. that moment designed to wake me up. Yeah. And it did. And in that moment, um, the veil lifted and I, and I became awakened. And in long story short, I had to ask him to leave. The relationship was done. I was horrified. I had to tend to a lot of things based upon the information that I had received. And then I decided to fly to Indiana where I'm from to be with my family. And it was during that time when the clairvoyance instantly, a lot of my gifts instantly came alive. That's awesome. And they were showing me my life and my journey with him and things about myself without any of the illusion or denial or falsity anymore. All, everything was with light. That's awesome. So I was just like shell shocked for a few days. A few days. That's not even that long. Yeah, that's true. Not, that's really not even that long considering. So everything came at once. So describe. Okay, that's obviously like a very intense way to have things happen. Because, yeah. I mean, it sounds like what happened is you had this narrative or picture of who Allison was as a person. Yes. And that had maintained even through Rocky getting, taking all the hits, getting up, still doing it. It had maintained up into a point where it just got shattered. Yes. So ego is basically like paralyzed for a split second. Stuff starts to sink in and it's like, oh shit. You got it. All right, I get it. So then all this stuff <laughs> starts downloading. You start getting access to what, you know, people would call cities back in the day. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, what was, so that that period, how quickly did it take you to come to terms with, I had similar things happen to me and I know a lot of other people have had those experiences mm. and there's, there's a spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. Some people accept it. Some people fight it. Some people think they're going insane. Yeah, Like lots of people. Carl Jung thought he was going insane. Like he yes. was the preeminent psychologist. Well, can't, yeah. can't remember yeah, yeah. where you're at, but I still have those moments. Yes, yeah, of course. That's, that's, <laughs> see, that's the key right there. And this is why um, I'm really happy we're meeting and you're a part of this event that we're doing because it's incredibly important to remember that we're still going through this stuff. Yes. When we say that we had an awakening moment or something happened, it's not like, oh, we're enlightened. We've hit mystic level master 99 like, i will teach you <laughs> that's not what it's about but right what i think is happening and you can correct me if i'm wrong I mean, this has been my experience over the past decade plus more people seem to be kind of tuning in to yes. what's going on whether no it's these powers or things that are happening or events in their life that push them towards something or awaken them in that sense it seems like the communities are now starting to coalesce a little bit 100 percent. that to me i mean you have this we're in this lovely space here thank that, you like, this is this is seeming like it's happening right? For real. So what was it like when this stuff started happening to you? Like you didn't mm. go overnight, right? From no. right, hip hop. <laughs> I know I say that sometimes in my events, I'm like from hip, <laughs> from hip hop radio host to right. shaman. Right. Yeah. It was definitely a process. Like I, I, it was an, it was an instantaneous awakening in the sense that like in a one moment in time, I became awakened, the right. veil lifted. I was clear audience. I was clairvoyant. However, the conscious reconnection to and the remembrance of the shaman in me and my mission here on earth, that took, again, I can't yeah. totally remember, but I think that was like a year and a half Sounds to, to, you know, and some change because I just, when I saw the truth of who I was, what I was clear on is, holy shit, Allison. So I mentioned in the intro, this is when the recorder cut out, unbeknownst to me and Allison, and we're having a lovely conversation. She's telling me about uh, how she acknowledged herself as a shaman, some of the experiences she went through with Claire Audience. Uh, it was pretty much like one of my favorite conversations. We were actually remarking as we were doing it how awesome it was, and I don't have it. So we're going to pick up after Allison and I uh, 
A, realized that it hadn't been recording, then realized we had gotten it. Now I realize we didn't get all of it. So we pick up in this kind of weird shock, like, holy shit, what the fuck just happened? We, we didn't freak out and something, you know, that we had been working on for the past hour wasn't there. But now we thought it was. And so you'll hear us pick up in this kind of uh, stupor filled, like, awe of how we just handled the situation. Back to the episode. Record. We'll just record. And it's recording. <laughs> okay, we're good. <sighs> well, we just got through that. We did handle that really, really, really well. Re- I think like is, I yeah, I think in like a nine out of 10. I mean, I think 10 out of 10 would have just been unaffected. Maybe. No problem. Know. Just moving on. No, that's as close to a 10 as you can get. I'm pretty confident of that. And I usually, just to be clear, do not handle situations like that very well. So I normally not as solid, but okay. Okay. We rode some waves together. Uh, we just had a bonding moment. Very, we did. This is, and it's just, you know, it's emphasizing how awesome this one was. So I don't know where we left off, but the reason I was checking. Oh, I, it was like the ancient women golden thread. Yes, 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 but, yes, yes. Let's no, let's pick that up because it's worthwhile. Um, so what do you think energetically is happening at this point with Every, so we're we're talking about the divine feminine coming back, it actually having some real effect on the world. Mm-hmm. But if you look outside in the world right now, it certainly doesn't look like that. So what do you what does that intuitively feel like to you? Intuitively, to me, it feels like the shadow of the planet surfacing. Awesome, fuck yeah! Which is what is needed, you know, in order to transcend, in order to shift to love and light, in order to shift to truth and wholeness, embodiment of wholeness. The key is acknowledging and embracing and, and having the balance of, of shadow and light. And if we're going to deny, you know, all the pain and suffering and the shadow components of the planet, like we're never going to get to where we ultimately are going during this global planetary shift and awakening. So it's a necessary component. It's a painful, dark, scary, sometimes horrifying one. I'm not saying that it's not those things, but it's a needed piece to get to the other side. So it's funny because this is this is something I've been saying now for since Trump was probably elected um, because a lot of people were understandably pretty distraught and still are distraught, right. myself included at times. But it does seem like this is this is shadow work. This yes. is what people don't want to talk about when they're doing, you know, spiritual materialism or just glossing over and everything is just going to be love and light all the time. And I agree. The foundation of what we're experiencing is love and light and unconditional understanding and compassion. But we are here for a reason. Yeah. And we do have to go through these kind of oscillations of up and down. And if we didn't, what would we really be doing? We wouldn't be dealing with the stuff we're supposed to. So we're, yeah. we're just seeing more in our face the, the pain and the things that have been in existence for exactly. thousands of years. Exactly. But now we're being confronted with it. And that's the only thing that catalyzes change. I think so. I mean, it's hard to. That's why mindfulness is such a big thing now, because that gives you the attention towards the things you should be looking at. Yeah. Which then gives you the opportunity of taking some action in that direction. All right. We're gonna. We could literally talk about this forever, and yeah. I. Although I'm, I am glad we don't have to re-record the whole thing. Oh, that would have been exhausting. But we could have done it. We could have done it. I know that. So I have three questions at the end, and then one little question at the end. Uh, so, what's your favorite color? Purple. What's your favorite number? One. What's your favorite animal? Well, it's weird. Mm. It was almost like a simultaneous like. My mouth wanted to say panther because that's my animal totem, but tiger wanted to be vocalized. Tigers, tiger it is. We're going with tiger. Okay. Uh, last question. What's a practical tip you could share with people listening that's helped you in your life? <sighs> I mean, maybe what I just did, breath. <laughs> Do you want to hear something funny? Yeah. That was literally the last suggestion. I've asked this now 103 times. That was the first time was an episode ago, episode ago that someone said breath. And you just said it. Huh. Hmm. So yeah, breath and breath work. It's it's our life force. It's prana. It's what returns you back to the present moment when you close your eyes and reconnect and just take a centering breath. Um, that's what, truly where our power is. It's what moves and can shift out um, old energy that needs to, to, to go. It's what creates space for new to come in. It's what cleanses and clears our chakras. It's everything. So breath. I love it. 
Allison, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, thank you. And I'm so glad you were able to come in here today it's and amazing. like experience this. And if anyone wants to come, um, it's in the middle of Manhattan doing Living Marketplace and I'm doing Awakening 101 every week. And I've got events going on all the time. I would love to meet your listeners. I'm sure yes. they're the most amazing people. They're pretty awesome. I just yeah. met a few the other week. They're really cool people. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Thank you so much for doing thank this. Thank you. Divine <laughs> awesome. blessings. Thank you for listening to that episode. How sweet and lovely is Allison? I know it was a short episode and you didn't actually get into the meat of what her story is about because it got cut out. But don't worry, I'm going to do another podcast with her soon. If you want to find out more about Allison, go to her website, AllisonCharles.com. That's Allison with a Y, one L. Uh, and she's doing actually tonight, Wednesday, October 4th at Doing Living Marketplace in New York City from 7 to 8 p.m. She's doing a sound bath and a group healing. They're also going to be doing prayers uh, for the Las Vegas tragedy that just happened and Puerto Rico and a lot of stuff. She is a lovely human being. If you have an opportunity to go be with her in person, do it. I'm looking forward to sitting down with her again to record another one of these so you can find out a little bit more about what we actually spoke about. Um, but yeah, go do that. Big thanks to everyone who supports this podcast on Patreon uh, by donating, giving some money, getting some music, doing all that stuff. Patrick Nemchik, he's the man. Uh, if you want to stay connected, join the Facebook community, join the email list. There's a lot of ways to stay in touch. Send me an email at noah at syncpodcast.com. Uh, thanks for all the support. The reviews are starting to come in in droves. I love them. They make me feel good and it helps people uh, find the podcast, which is great. Uh, so that's it. I will see you next week.